College football down in California has been dominated by the USC Trojans for as long as we can remember, and when they were among the elite in the college football world in the 2000s, UCLA was experiencing their own downfall. But everything changed for the program in 2012 when they hired Jim Mora as its head coach. In just his first three seasons from 2012 to 2014, UCLA made the Pac-12 title game and won 9 games in 2012 and 10 games in 2013 and 2014 behind the stellar quarterback play of Brett Hundley. For a brief moment, it appeared the Bruins were back and were going to take over college football in LA for the near future or at least share the spotlight with USC. They were producing a lot of NFL prospects and they were always in contention in the Pac-12, but since that last 10-3 season in 2014, UCLA has had 4 losing seasons and haven't won a bowl game since 2014. So what happened to UCLA football? In today's video, we'll be exploring their recent history and looking at what factors and people played into their downfall. So with these videos, we like to talk about the recent history of the team first and then we talk about the factors later in the video. If you don't care about the recent history, there's a timestamp that you can go to where we just talk about the factors. But let's go ahead and talk about the recent history. So let's drop ourselves into the 2015 offseason. After finishing with yet another 10 win season, UCLA was going to experience some change. Quarterback Brett Hundley, who started the previous three seasons, had declared for the NFL Draft, and there were huge shoes to fill to replace him. In his 40 games played, he threw for 75 touchdowns and 9,966 yards to go along with 30 rushing touchdowns. His ability to run the ball and pass effectively opened up so much for the offense, and his loss was huge. They would also lose linebacker Eric Kendricks, who anchored the defense along with Miles Jack, and defensive end Owa Odigizua, who made the all pac 12 second team. They would have a new defensive coordinator in Tom Bradley coming in to fix and improve a defense that allowed 28 points per game the season before. This team still had some great players on the squad, but no player had the hype of freshman quarterback Josh Rosen. Now Hundley's shoes were big to fill, but Rosen was a 5-star recruit and the best quarterback in the nation, so UCLA had found themselves a great replacement. And that hype continued to grow bigger as in the first four games of the 2015 season, UCLA won all four of their games, including two against ranked BYU and Arizona. Unfortunately for UCLA, stud linebacker Miles Jack suffered a season-ending knee injury just three games into the season, and his loss was huge. Over the next two games, UCLA allowed 38 points and 56 points in back-to-back -back games and lost both, putting them at 4-2 and on the season and out of the top 25 after they had rose all the way up to number 7. However, three straight conference wins catapulted them to 7-2 and, and back in the top 25, still with a shot at the Pac-12 championship game. But UCLA would end their season winning one of their last four games, including a bowl loss to Nebraska and a loss to rival USC that could have seen UCLA play in the Pac-12 championship game had they won. So finishing at 8-5 overall is not a bad season, but the expectations for the Bruins were definitely high, and they failed to achieve much. Things were only going to get worse for the program as they lost even more in the offseason. Eight total players were drafted into the NFL, including linebacker Miles Jack, third-team All-American defensive tackle Kenny Clark, and running back Paul Perkins, who was the main back and rushed for 1,300 yards on the season. They also lost two of their top pass catchers in Jordan Payton and Thomas Duarte, who combined for almost 2,000 yards receiving. And in an attempt to upgrade the offensive production, Kennedy Palomalu was promoted to offensive coordinator. So there was going to be a lot of change going on for the program, but the team was expected to be okay. They opened up the 2016 season ranked at number 18 in the AP poll, but this would be the last time they would be ranked in the top 25 for the rest of the season. They lost in overtime to Texas A&M in week one, but won their next two games to put them at two and one. This is where the season would really derail and everything just went downhill from here. They would only win two of their last nine games and lost their final game of the season to USC by 22 points. They were three and three at one point, but Rosen injured his shoulder and was out for the rest of the season. Due to a lack of weapons, his production took a hit this year, but he would be fully healthy by the next season, so there was still some hope for the program. But the team just continued to lose more talent, and a defense that was already average lost four defensive starters to the draft, including edge rusher Takaris McKinley and corner Fabian Morrow. And after starting off the 2017 season at 2-0 with a big week one comeback win against Texas A&M, UCLA re-entered the top 25 at number 25, only to lose their next two games and go right back out. Nothing went right for the team the rest of the year, and while Josh Rosen played great and threw 26 touchdowns, the defense was among the worst in the nation, allowing an average of almost 37 points per game, which ranked at 117th in the nation. They finished at 6-7 on this season and made a bowl game but lost to Kansas State. And after losing to USC yet again, Jim Mora was fired for not meeting expectations with the talent recruited. There was a wide feeling of underachievement with multiple top 20 recruiting classes and the UCLA brass felt it was time for change. Thankfully for them, head coach Chip Kelly was on the market and they ultimately chose him as the replacement. 
After failing at the NFL level with the Eagles and 49ers, Kelly returned to the college football scene with some promise after his transformation with the Oregon Ducks. The 2018 season was expected to be a rebuild, but UCLA was expected to be competitive. They once again had a new defensive coordinator in Jerry Azanaro, and they did lose Josh Rosen to the NFL, so the Bruins needed to find a new quarterback. They ultimately rolled with both Wilton Spate and Dorian Thompson Robinson, who would eventually prove to be the permanent starter. However, the Chip Kelly UCLA era didn't get off to a hot start, and the Bruins started out 0-5 for the first time since 1943. The losses weren't even close, and there was just one game in that stretch that they lost by 7 points or less. Wilton Spate was expected to be the starter for the team, but he suffered a back injury in the first game and never really regained consistency on the field. So Dorian Thompson Robinson was just thrown in as a true freshman, and of course the results weren't immediately there. After that 0-5 start, UCLA did end the season with some promise. They went 3-4 the rest of the way, and one of those wins was actually against USC. Now the 2018 season probably went as bad as it could have as the offense ranked 98th in the nation in offensive scoring and the defense ranked 104th in the nation in defensive scoring. But at least they got Dorian Thompson Robinson some experience and they did end their losing streak against USC. In 2019, the Bruins were expected to finish middle of the pack in the Pac-12 South and maybe reach a bowl game, but they failed to make a bowl game this year. They started out at 1-5 with the only win coming in a legendary comeback against Wazoo and then won their next three games to put them at 4-5 on the season. However, they lost the last three games of the year to finish at 4-8. and eight. Dorian Thompson Robinson developed pretty nicely this season and looks to build on his sophomore campaign, but the offense and defense were still well below average, ranked at 80th in the nation in offensive scoring and 116th in the nation in defensive scoring. Attendance numbers continued to dip for the Bruins, dropping to 38,000 for the last game of the season against California. Those are still good numbers, but in a stadium that fits 91,000, those numbers don't look good at all. For a while, it appeared UCLA was back and on the rise, but they have slowly fallen once again and are rebuilding. So what and who were the main components of this UCLA fall? The first reason for their fall would have to be the defense. Now UCLA has produced a few defensive NFL players since 2014, but considering that fact, it's astonishing how bad this defense is. Under Tom Bradley and now Jerry Azanaro, UCLA hasn't finished in the top 50 of points allowed per game once. They have also had 19 games where they've allowed 500 total yards of offense and 17 games where they've allowed 40 points or more. With the amount of great talent these defenses have had, it's insane how bad they've been. The hiring of Azanaro also made no sense, and although he is a coach that Chip Kelly loves and has worked with, he's had no success defensively since getting to UCLA. The last time Azanaro ran a defense before coming to UCLA, it was just as bad. He was the co-defensive coordinator at Duke from 2004 to 2006, going 3-31 over the three seasons with defenses that ranked 100th, 89th, and 105th in the nation. However, the Bruins have made notable progress with their run defense as they allow less yards each season. The past defense has been bad for a unit that was considered to be good, and the players have been blaming breakdowns in communication and other lapses that have left receivers wide open. Now the coaches just need to do a better job, plain and simple, and if there's another below average season defensively, it's time to move on from Azanaro. The next reason for their fall is the amount of weapons outside of quarterback. UCLA has had some good quarterbacks with Brett Hundley, Josh Rosen, and now Dorian Robinson Thompson suiting up for the team since 2013, so they are doing a good job in that department. They still need production from their weapons outside of quarterback two though. The offensive line play continues to be below average and the wide receiver core and running backs are not producing as liked. But the coaches need to do a better job themselves. Chip Kelly has implemented new schemes, trying to make it more pro ready but that has created an average offense. This past season, UCLA averaged less than four yards a carry and they have yet to establish a true run game since losing Paul Perkins in 2015. They have averaged 2.9, 3.7, 4.1, and 3.7 rush yards per attempt over the last four seasons and not being able to effectively run the ball has prevented this UCLA team from taking the next step needed from an average offense. This past season, UCLA ranked 11th in the conference in average yards per play. There are less explosive plays than ever before, and they just can't get anything going running or passing the ball. Last but not least, we have the man himself, Chip Kelly, as well as the final years of Jim Mora. Now, as an Eagles fan, I have a lot of choice words to say about Chip, but we'll save that for another day. Mora, at least during the last few seasons of his tenure, continued to misuse talent and lose in the big games. He had plenty of top 20 recruiting classes, and with this talent at his hand, he couldn't even win the Pac-12. And after being relieved from his job as head coach, UCLA was left to rebuild. And Chip Kelly has not done a great job at rebuilding this program so far. He's already lost more games at UCLA than he did at Oregon, and that mark was surpassed a long time ago. With Kelly, UCLA has dipped out of the top 20 completely in recruiting, as they ranked 19th in 2018, 40th in 2019, and 32nd in 2020 according to 24-7 Sports. 
Kelly has also failed to recruit a single five-star recruit according to 24-7 sports ranking systems. The recruiting is getting worse by the year, and with the area and exposure UCLA has at its disposal, the recruiting needs to be better. Kelly has been noted for being able to recruit speed guys, but yet they still aren't producing enough big plays. He needs to do a better job of play calling and getting the ball to those speed guys he brings in. Or as a Reddit commenter said, he needs to get football guys with elite speed, not just fast guys. This UCLA team is going through such a rough stretch over these past few seasons. Less people are turning up to the Rose Bowl than ever, and the play on the field is the worst it's been in a while. It's not like the university has given people a reason to come out and watch the games over the past few seasons, but watching student reactions of the team was surprising. You would think that with this area, it'd be easy to get people to attend football games, but just listen to these clips. So what do you think about how the team did this season? <laughs> I mean, I can only laugh because they're like, they just suck right now. Yeah, they're just terrible. I don't even know what the record is. I, mean, I came in expecting that they weren't going to be that good. So. <laughs> they met <laughs> expectations. But I still wanted them to be good. It's a love hate relationship, I think. I really want to root for them, but it's so hard. Now, these may or may not be football diehards, but you don't need diehards to create a great atmosphere. Something more needs to be done by the school in general to create a higher turnout for students and turn the Rose Bowl into a fortress. There is some promise for the university, as Dorian Thompson Robinson is a good quarterback who is continuing to develop. He has some accuracy issues, but overall, I really like his game. And this is the third season in the Chip Kelly tenure. So if there's a time to turn around a program, it's right now. And if he isn't the one to do it, then that means that UCLA can find the next guy who they believe could do it. But as always, only time will tell just how long it will take for the UCLA Bruins to rise up again. This has been a video on UCLA football. Thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe if you're new. And as always, I will see you guys next time.